council basically um, governs, well, it's the governance of the union. So we um, deal with the, um, the administration of the union affairs. CUNY Council uh, is a, an elected body of uh, 24 nurses and midwives from the private, public and aged care sector. It's the executive decision-making body of the Queensland Nursing Union. We review expenditure and activities concerning uh, the union and debate issues um, across the floor. Our members in council come from a wide range of backgrounds and um, classifications in nursing, so we have a broad scope of um, debating across the table. We're not just here about getting um, better pay and better conditions, but it's about the, um, uh, the profession of nursing um, and about the ethics of nursing and about how nurses are part of not just um, providing health care, but in determining how that health care is provided and, and how health is an important part of the community. They make the decisions perhaps that need to be done on the moment, you know, between council meetings and if you haven't got time, well, council meets um, every second month or so. Um, so they would deal with issues that perhaps are of a more immediate nature. It's a smaller group, so it's able to make um, more of the decisions that can't wait for the um, bi-monthly meeting that the councillors have. It's really important to be on executive from my point of view because at this level I can actually influence decision making on behalf of a lot of nurses in the whole of Queensland. Through my duties and through my involvement just at branch level um, got interested in becoming a councillor, put my hand up and was lucky enough to be elected and since then it's been an eye-opener, it's been a huge learning curve. When I looked at the, um, who was on the council the previous terms, I've noticed that most of them come from along the coast, up around the Cape, um, Toowoomba, but nobody in as far as Emerald or out west. So I thought, well, maybe I can make a difference and have a say for the people in the rural areas. So that's why I put my hand up. I started off as a member and then went into branch positions and I just felt I found it very interesting and uh, wanted to know more. Start off as a rep and then get onto the branch executive and then the next step of activism is to actually go that one step higher into council. I'd been involved in um, the, the branch at Nambour Hospital and um, I'd attended um, uh, IRL training here in Brisbane and um, I was keen to take a, uh, a larger role in, in, um, in the union. The main motivation was to um, extend my current work uh, as a, a QNU representative. Um, I've been, uh, I think, an active member of uh, the Royal Brisbane uh, Hospital QNU branch for some years, and I and I thought that um, standing for council uh, was a, a, quite a, a logical uh, progression of that, um, and I'm very glad that I did. best about being a councillor is being part of a mechanism that upholds that everything that is dear for the, the Queensland nurse, both industrially and professionally. The fact that I actually am involved and actually know the process now before I didn't have a clue what actually went on in council and I thoroughly enjoyed the experience and I think, I hope I've helped. The thing that I most enjoy is making a difference, being part of a collective I love the way the union you know, has made massive changes for nurses um, and for midwives and definitely for patients. It's a very positive thing to do. I think the best thing about being on council is that we can be a voice for our members. Um, they are the ground roots of the union and um, it's important that what happens at the ground face of the union actually uh, gets filtered through to executive and council where decisions can be made. Working in, in an area, um, mental health, where you, you deal in, in a specialty, one of the uh, things about uh, council is that it keeps me abreast of all areas of nursing. Uh, I guess the best part is the, um, the knowledge that you gain, the information that you can share with your um, colleagues. The collegiality and the opportunity to 
discuss and debate with people who have differing opinions to you because I think the safety measure that most of us take is that we surround ourselves with like-minded people and it's always interesting to get the opposite point of view or a differing point of view because um, often there are things there you, that you've never discussed or thought of before. Well, it's actually been about hearing everybody's point of view. I think um, there is really vigorous debate at Council about a variety of issues. Um, everybody who comes is a representative either of a specialist group, of a level of nursing, of rural and remote, of metropolitan. And so um, while we have a vigorous debate to come to a single conclusion, I've learned so much about wider health services, not just public health, but also private health and working in nursing homes. The next council election, I think the nominations have to be in, in September of this year and then the elections occur um, in the following two weeks and I think we sort of know by the end of October or early November about the outcomes. So anybody is able to nominate for council? It has been every two years. Now there's a rule change and it will be every four years. The tenure will be four years. So people, you know, we have a, a council elections at the end of the year so I guess people need to be looking at um, whether they where will they be in four years' time? You know, it, it's a, um, something that you don't take lightly. The Australian Nursing Federation, the QNU is a branch of the ANF, and uh, that meant that when elections came up, uh, members had to actually make two votes. And it was getting confusing for them, and they, you know, um, to simplify the process, we decided to make one election and to make it for a longer period. By the time um, the council gets comfortable with each other and have those robust debates, two years is not quite enough to have the group norm and form like they do. So four years is going to be a lot better for us, I think. You know, someone out there in the workforce now who's got a few years ahead of them, I you know, strongly advise them to give it a go. Uh, the recent rule changes in uh, in the the QNU are really about uh, uh, streamlining the, the the processes within the union. It was timely. There was a uh, timely because the the rules have now existed for, uh, since it's in the union's inception. This, of course, is the thirtieth year of the Queensland Nursing Union. Some of the rules are now archaic, some of the rules are a little bit clumsy and don't necessarily reflect the, the contemporary setting uh, of the union, the industrial relations environment that we're in. Primarily um, the rule changes work towards making, making the union more understandable to the members. Also there were some matters that were pressing that needed to really be uh, reviewed and reformed. For example, the ability to hold uh, the uh, Queensland ANF elections simultaneously with the QNU but through the one ballot. Rationalisation and, uh, and efficiencies around brand structures and things like that. So um, that, that's, I guess, in a nutshell as I understand it to be. Um, and certainly I've been very supportive of uh, the hard work that's, uh, that's gone on over many months to, uh, to achieve that process. So Council also provides um, safeguards so that our executive and secretary um, make or can assist in making the best decisions um, appropriate for the union and uh, that they keep within the political, financial and legal framework um, and that we follow the strategic direction of the QNU. Good governance, corporate governance is uh, essential to the Queensland Nursing Union. As a councillor, uh, I have and we all have a fiduciary responsibility to ensure that the, uh, the Q&U is run um, properly, uh, that it is transparent uh, and uh, that we are held accountable for the decisions of the union. Good governance is critical uh, f to keep the, a good name, uh, to ensure that um, uh, this is a member-led union uh, where the views of the members are paramount and uh, really councillors and the, um, uh, the office here in, in West End is, is, uh, are their servants of our members. There is a significant amount of resource. Of course, this is members' money um, and it's very important that we uh, use that money in a most responsible 
way that benefits all members of the Queensland Nursing Union. I think what has changed for the QNU is that we need to keep a watchful eye on the LNP's agenda. Um, and we need to forge new relationships um, with a change of government. I am concerned that the ball game's been changed and I am worried that we're going to have a, a really big battle. Making sure we don't lose any gains and not only for us as nurses but again for patients and clients. Um, it's easy for political wannabes to do their three years to say to do this and do that but at the end of the day, it's the patient in the bed. We need strong leadership if we, if we want to keep nursing where we want nursing. I mean, we want to be able to nurse our patients and our residents. Uh, we don't want to become a generic workforce with these nameless people doing nursing work. So we have to fight, actually, to keep the nursing in nursing. To me, the, the nursing leadership that I admire are the people who well represent nurses, not necessarily those who are paid well to represent nurses. A lot of people probably don't take the, uh, the label of leader on themselves, but they are leaders, and it might be the way they run a shift, the way they do their job. It's the person who's working very, very hard and helping colleagues do their job properly and safely and protecting them and informing them of what their rights are. That's what I see as leadership. And I think that the role that the QNU uh, plays and myself as part of that uh, is integral to, to nursing leadership. It, um, essentially I think that um, we are the interface between um, the nurse, the employer um, and the wider community I th and I think we do a great job of representing nursing um, uh, on that front. The immediate future for us is very, very challenging. I think the fact that we're nearly 50,000 members is our hope, but it is also, if we become too complacent and rest on our laurels, that we can still fade off into the distance too. The industrial relations uh, environment is changing. Of course, there's a new government in Queensland and uh, we now have to work with that government and we look forward to that but certainly representing the, the clinical and professional as well as industrial issues of nurses and midwives in an environment that is ever changing. I'm of the generation that is in the big baby boomer retirement and the issues for the future will be going around that mass retirement of nurses and the lack of ability to replace them. We really need to focus on keeping um, nursing in Queensland and nurses of all levels a professional workforce, an educated workforce and as I said earlier even though the unions here is about better pay and better conditions um, we're also here about better training, um, better recognition and um, regu regulation and education of, of nurses. The future for nurses and midwives is great it, that's if we stick together, if we're prepared to stand up for important issues. I think it's bright I think that we will remain advocates for nurses and Queenslanders in general. The important thing is for Queensland, you know, we are a leader in nursing and we've got to remain a leader in nursing in Australia. And um, that's, I think it's, it's a challenge and it's a goal and I think that's something we should do. Nurses are natural educators, they're fantastic health promoters and um, they've proven this and they've proven they're adaptable, that society loves them. Um, there's lots of evidence to show that that they're well accepted and respected in the community. So nurses have proven they're adaptable. They can do anything and they can go anywhere. Participate in your union. Uh, learn about how the union works. Undertake some training. Um, if there's a campaign, jump on board. Everybody should be an activist, every nurse, because especially if the new industrial laws I think that um, our future is very scary and if we don't stand up and learn how to speak up that we're going to be in a lot of trouble in the future. I think uh, we need to look at workloads um, to keep nursing and midwifery strong in Queensland. 
Um, paperwork is becoming an ever-increasing uh, drama at the coalface of nursing. By remaining together uh, as a single voice so that the collectivism of being in a union uh, remains in place. The union's dynamic, it's, it's ever-changing and um, to, to me the, the most wonderful thing is the, the, the democracy of, of the QNU compared to other organisations I've been involved in in the past where it, it truly is a, um, a member-driven organisation and I love that. That's what I love about the QNU. You can contact the QNU at any time and ask for information or advice and of course your local organiser and the councillors because the councillors who are um, uh, they, they're here representing you um, whether it's your local area, whether it's your speciality of nursing or whether it's the level of nursing that you're at. So um, contact any of, any of those people. That's it? Yeah, that's it. Great. No sound all right. Oh, you're fantastic. <laughs>